Hello and welcome and thank you for joining in today. I'm Lessa Gadet, self-care strategist for female entrepreneurs who lead teams and I help them infuse self-care into their businesses so that they and their team members can avoid burnout, sustain motivation and thrive together both personally and prof professionally and bringing that quality of life into the workplace. Today I have a special guest with me, CJ Boyd, and we're going to discuss tools that we both use to streamline our businesses for better efficiency and workflow. So welcome CJ, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, I'm CJ and I am a former cafe owner operator who, Pivoted into the online space after pandemic closed my business, and I just really understand that now it's a, my ability to impact on a global scale versus having that location identity. You know, I could just serve so many people, and I just love the ability to be online and be able to have a global team and impact women across the, across the country. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that about what you do, and you know, there's not enough time to go into all of that, but you do have a great message. You have uh, a great model and I definitely love what you're doing. So again, um, reach out to CJ if you want to know more about what she does, but you, you know, definitely we're going to talk about things today, which I feel are really important. As you can see, the topic of today's discussion is tools that enhance team collaboration. I myself do not yet have a team, but I am in the search as it's, as we speak today, I've already set up an interview with my first VA interview and I am going to be doing that. Yes, I have now decided it's time to get help because we can't always do it alone, nor should we, nor should we actually feel like we have to do it alone. So let's talk about tool selection for business owners. What are the key factors you consider when you're selecting collaboration tools for your team? I think the first thing is ease of use because, you know, there are so many tools out there. For me personally, I don't love technology and I, I kind of just, I kind of used to use that as an excuse that I'm not going to have Trello or have any of the boards or do any things because I was like, I don't want to take the time to learn it. So I think the number one key is ease of use for people. I think, you know, the people that I attract into my team are people like me. And so I'm assuming those people are not like wanting to spend a bunch of time, you know, learning all the specifics of technology. So ease of use and this really being able to have the ability to go, OK, this is a tool I'm going to use. I don't have to spend hours learning it. It's just going to be something I can dive in and just use right out the gate. Yeah, I'm with you too. As I said, I, I don't yet have a team, but I believe that, of course, again, it starts with ease of use for myself, because especially because I'm learning. And I know that I want to have things in place that I can pass to someone else, like easily for them to slip into taking over the role of whatever that is that I've asked them to do using the tools that I have, being able to also keep in contact with them. Like for me, one of my favorite tools is Trello, uh, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I do love Trello and it's something I've been using for a few years as well as Canva. But again, like we're going to get into those tools later, but I just want to, for me, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's that ease of use, but also if I'm going to pass something off, because especially if you're going to pass off your things that you want other people to do, you should at least have a good understanding of what it is, number one, that you're passing off to them. But the tools, especially if they're not available on a day that you need access to something, you should know how to use it. So for me, that's how I look at tool selection for myself is I'm using it. Um, I find, if I find that it's easy to use, great. I'll be able to then, this is how I want my team member to be able to access it and to wh what I want them to do while accessing that tool for me and being able to, again, work together. But it, it, it's, it, it, it is a team. And again, it's collaborating with the person or persons in your business that help make it easier for your business to flow, you know, easier uh, in the things that you do day to day. So um, yeah, that's definitely for me. I think another thing is the du duplicatability. You know, a lot of people come into the online space, entre entrepreneurs want to have that time freedom. You need something that you can easily step into, teach your team how to use, and then they can step out and duplicate that because, you know, let's be honest, we're leaders. We're building a team of leaders. They're not going to stay under our wings the whole time. We want them to be able to step into their own leadership and then use that duplicatability to go out and build their own teams along the way. So I think duplicatability and ease of use work hand in hand. 
I love that you brought that up because for me too, I feel like uh, and I was talking about this with someone else uh, as well as I've talked about it in my live videos is that you are building a business and you're building, you don't, you're not bringing in team members to like sit there for a season. You really want them to stay. However, if you're building this business where you have processes in place that work, that are designed to work, that bring the team together, you're going to attract people like that. You're also, it gives you better, like you were saying, leaders in your business that can act as mentors for your new hires when you're expanding. That to me is important. You want this to be able to empower them to do a job well, but also to be able to then step in when we're expanding, we're getting bigger. Now I'm going to hire a couple more people that are going to maybe fall under your department. I'm going to need you to step in to be their mentor and, and show them the ropes. And so that it's, like a flawless, I, I wouldn't say flawless, but seamless, I guess, yeah. uh, integration of new hires. I think that's really important. So yeah, yeah. definitely. So uh, let's talk a bit from a, I, I know that you used to be a solo entrepreneur. Now, mm -hmm. as you know, I still <laughs> am, but can you share spe how specific tools have directly impacted you when you were back there and now your team's productivity? And, and how has that helped to streamline processes for you? I think that most people, they come into the online space and they feel like they're going to step into this thing. And they just, you know, a lot of people are out there saying it's copy and paste and do all the things. But when you're truly trying to build a business and your authenticity and the values and morals and integrity that you have, you have to lay a solid foundation in which to, you know, get your message across. And I think when you bring in people, that want to be the same, that want to, you know, show their authenticity, show their ability to be their themselves. It's, it's one of those things where you lead by example, they learn what you do, they watch what you do. And I think a lot of times when we go into the space, we're like, Oh, I have to do it all. If I'm going to build my business, I have to prove that I can do this. And when I had my brick and mortar, I, that's what it was. I dove into that to prove to myself that I wasn't a failure to prove to myself that I could accomplish something to prove to myself that I wasn't just another label of, you know, a wife, a mom, uh, somebody else's employee. I wanted to prove that I could build something on my own. And I did that. But it, what I did was, you know, into exhaustion, you know, wearing 20 different hats because number one, you don't, Sometimes when you start a business, you're like, you know, nobody's going to work it like you would. They're not going to treat it like it's your business and you want to be in control. But when in an online space, it's a little bit different because you can, you know, loosen the reins a little bit and realize I don't have to do it all. I'm making it harder for myself if I try to keep everything to the chest and I try to do everything and be the one one woman show where when you can bring people in and you can use systems and duplication and have people, you know, I can bring people into my business and I can say, OK, here's a training that you need to watch. It's really important. It's an onboarding call. You can just go in there. And that not only shows them that they can free up their time, but they don't have to be the end all be all do everything that they can actually like let go of some of the things. And when you have systems in place to do that, it really again, hones in that skill of being an entrepreneur is about the freedom that it's supposed to bring, not, you know, being tied to that business 24 seven. Yeah, I'm, I'm also glad you really that you brought that up because it time management, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to have time freedom when I have the money. And it's actually you're going to have the freedom when you actually know how to manage your time the best of your ability, you know, and having those processes in place, whether it's the um, automations, whether you have team members, whatever that looks for you, looks like for you, it's like managing your time the best that you can is going to give you that time freedom. It's not, yes, the money, of course, you know, you're not going to be trading time for money when you're in your own business and you're effectively using your time. Again, it comes down to using your time wisely. That's where you're going to get the freedom. And I think a lot of people look at it Oh, if I have this once I, I'm going to work, you know, I'm just going to like push hard, work hard, do as much as I can in, you know, as, as, for as many hours every day as I can. If I'm going to sacrifice some of, some of my time away from my family, they'll understand because in the long run, when I start making the money, it's going to bring me that freedom. When really all it's going to do is it's going to rob you of the time of spending that with your family, missing out on, on family uh, celebrations, milestones, things like that. Maybe you even stop celebrating the milestones of wh what you've accomplished in your 
your business because you are in that mindset of, okay, check mark done, move on to the next thing. And really, you know, that just kind of keeps you, it, it keeps you moving. Yes. But also if you get stuck, you've, you don't know how to celebrate. Um, you don't know how to get back to that place of, oh, I found my way at those milestones. Uh, I can go back and tap into that, those those moments and then maybe go back and look at what worked there and see like, why am I stuck here? So figuring that out. But a lot of people get into that check mark done fa- uh, mindset and that keeps them stuck, right? Yep, they're <laughs> like, check, done, next. What's next? And I, I've, I've think that a lot of people fall into that trap in the beginning too, because they're like, I'm so, I have to make this money goal or I have to make this rank goal. And it's like, what if you just celebrate the fact that you got up today, you, you checked off your top three, you know, money-making activities and you got to have, sit down and have a cup of coffee. That's a huge thing because a lot of people that get in that hustle and grind mentality. And there's a lot of people who are coaches out in the online space saying, Oh, hustle and grind now, you know, it'll pay in the end. What if there's not time in the end? And that's what mm-hmm. I like to tell my people. Like you said, we need to, put prioritize what's important. Our family is the most important. Yes, we want to make money. Yes, we want to, you know, create impact. But without our family, there's nothing that that doesn't mean anything. So so let's say you hustle and grind and you worked and you made that goal, but then your family can't stand you. They won't sit down at the dinner table with you because you've not spent any time or given them, you know, a priority in your life, then that money means nothing. Mm hmm. And especially if you have young kids, you know, I had someone on my podcast, she's a mom with two young children. And she had said, when she re- she realized, and it was it wasn't because of her own realization, but she realized she hadn't been spending time with her family when her son, who was four at the time said, Mommy, can you put down your phone? And when your baby says, can you put down the phone? That is an eye opener to like, wow. I'm missing out and they're feeling neglected. And it was, you know, and it was even, you know, echoed by her husband saying, "Hun, we need to find time for just the four of us because she has, they both have a son and a daughter and they're both young. And so those moments won't last forever because we know, right, kids grow up fast. And once they get to those teenage years and then beyond, they're going to have less, not necessarily they don't want to spend time with you. But those mommy moments where they want it, they're they're like glued to your side are not going to be like that forever. So, you know, you want to make sure that you don't miss out on those moments. So definitely glad that you brought up the time management thing, too. Um, So when you're like integrating stuff into your like tools into your business, what if, if you face any challenges when you bring new tools in to your existing workflow? And and if you did, how did your team and yourself overcome them? I think the the main thing is like having a training, like Googling it on YouTube. YouTube is a wealth of knowledge to tell you, to teach you how to do anything. Um, for me, I'll be honest, Canva is not my friend. I Canva and I do not have a great relationship. We have a love-hate relationship. But it was like in my head, I was like, I can't do it. And then I'm sitting there going, you are smart. You have two college degrees. You built a business from the ground up. Canva can't be that hard. Come on. And so I put in my chat with my team. I'm like, okay, if there's any Canva experts out there, I need help. And they're like, it's really not that hard. Just YouTube it. YouTube will teach you everything. And I think just dialing it back and not getting inside your head and going, okay, it's too hard, or I don't want to do it, or I'm just going to pay somebody to do it. Those are all tools that you need to invest time in yourself to learn. And if you just really get out of your head and get out of your own way and, you know, take the time to learn the task at hand, that's going to serve you for the lifetime. So it's a, you know, right now investment for a lifetime of ROI, because you're only going to be able to build those skills. And so I think the other thing is too, is zone of genius, you know, asking other people on your team, do you know how to do this? Are you good at this? Because there are so many people, we we come into the space, we're not all one person, we're all unique, we all have gifts and talents. And that's why we come together to create this team. But it's amazing to celebrate each other's individual talents and zones of genius, because Let's be honest, capitalize on that. If one person can make the Canva things, you know, we have, let's say we have a launch coming up. One person can do the Canva. The other person can write the copy. The other person figures out how to get it into StreamYard and stream into the group. It's all a matter of honing in on the people who have those valuable skills that they're already good at and then learning by them, by watching them do it. Yeah, I agree with you. Like that's what I've 
for me in the beginning, I would get really frustrated by new tools because thinking like, oh, I go in and I'd be looking in their help area, how to use it. And so I just started really going onto YouTube because a lot of people on YouTube know that people who are on, know this will go onto YouTube and make videos about using those tools. So, you know, even as an example, I built my husband's website. I'm not a website developer, but I went on, someone taught me how in 15 minutes for his to use Bluehost and I went in and I created his website and boom, it was done. But it was just stepping outside of my comfort zone and doing it because you get scared. Um, and also, well, Canva is my friend. I love Canva. I know. Uh, I use I know. it for everything. <laughs> and But again, it's, I still surrounded myself. I still do surround myself with people who are experts in using Canva, who are experts at website development, who are experts at social media, um, how to use it, how they, how to actually even work with the algorithm when it was coming to, when it came down to like Instagram, I learned how to actually love Instagram. I never used to like Instagram at all. But because I surrounded myself with people like that and who actually utilize those tools to the best of their ability and they teach other people how to use it, I learned to love it. So it's really like you were saying, number one, just find stepping outside and figure it, going on and finding something that you can go through a tutorial. And if you're still having trouble, then reaching out to people and saying, hey, who here knows how to use this? Can you maybe, we can maybe get on a call, we can talk about it, or, or are you able to be my go-to person for this? And that's okay. Asking for help, I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of people won't ask for help and they'll stay stuck. And that's where they get really frustrated. So I, I really love that you, that you were saying like, you know, I'll admit, you know, some of my, some of the tools that I've used, I'm not, they're not my friend, but learning, you know, learning is growing and just keep, you know, keeping at it. And if today you just feel frustrated, then stop and maybe get back to it tomorrow when you have, a, you know, you've had a good night's rest and you're more, you're more inclined to like feel, okay, motivated to figure it out. So I love that you, that you were saying that. I, and another thing too, for, for us, we have team huddles. We have a weekly team huddle and the beauty of it is, is that we, we start every single, every single team huddle with a celebration. Hey, what have you accomplished this week? Or what's something good that you're celebrating? It doesn't necessarily have to do anything with business, but then we go around and we're like, you have a 30 second elevator pitch to tell people what you're really good at. So then we know that person's good at Canva. That person's good at Reels. And that person can train on IG. And then we we switch off on the huddles and one person gets to teach their skill that next month or that next Monday. So then we're all getting the information that we need. And it's not just a me, me, me. I'm the team leader. I'm the CEO. Everybody has to listen to me and I'm going to talk, you know, every single meeting. It's about really bringing in and integrating everybody into that leadership and that that get, allows them to step into their own leadership and be confident in that skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel so drawn to people who actually have learned to as, as leaders to listen to their team and not be all, this is all about me. I'm, I'm the only one that's right. And the only one that can do anything right. But actually being open to listening to someone else, their, their perspective. I've learned so much, even from younger, the younger generation. I, I feel like, you know, just because, you know, I'm older and I've had more life experience doesn't mean that I can't learn something new, especially because a lot of there's a lot of new things that have come into this world that maybe they might understand a little bit easier or might find more um they're more in, they have more um excitement around it and are able to teach me something around it so i think that's important um I, yeah i want to ask you a question have you i know you have team members so but do you outsource to any you know like externally partners or contractors from time to time and how do you facilitate that so that it's like smooth you know and that it keeps things going easily for you for me, I, I'm a part of a platform that actually has all kinds of training and knowledge and skill sets, um, honing skills. Um, so 
a lot of times I go to the people who have already done this. You know, people are looking for VAs. They've gone through the process and they have in there a, a spreadsheet that says, these are the questions you ask when you bring somebody in. These are what you're looking for, the skills to make sure you have it. So really, like you said, masterminding with the people who have already done it. I personally, I don't have like VAs or anything like that. But within my community, we have people who have already built their teams and they have like, you know, five or six VAs working for them. And so there, it's really just about, following the lead of other people who have had success with it. Um, And then I think really just having genuine conversations. If you're looking to bring someone in your business, number one, know exactly what you're looking for. Know who you will work well with. But then also when you go into that conversation, listen to that person and let them show you their skills. Don't have, you know, unwritten expectations about them. Really just listen with an open heart, open mind, and let them, you know, show you their skills. Because there are a lot of, People out there saying, oh, I can do this or I have this ability. And then when you get down to it and you meet them, you're like, no, that you really don't have that skill. So it's a matter of like trusting your intuition, too. If something seems too good to be true and you're like, mm, I don't really think that that's good. You have to really be able to listen to your heart and really just follow your instincts to know that that's not going to be a good fit for you. Yeah, no, I agree. I totally agree with that. So let's talk about the future trends. Um do you, do you have you seen anything that's upcoming or you know especially like even with AI you know you see how AI is like completely blown up you know it started out small and all of a sudden you start seeing all of these AI tools for creating content you know chat gpt claude bard merlin is another one that shows up now on my google my google page um, and then you have like, you have all of these other things that you can do within each of these platforms, you know, they have like these, um, like attachments that work for well with chat GPT, like uh, AI PRM, which helps then creating, you can start creating all of these chat GP, uh, chat or GPTs, I should say, you can create your own, your own, um, like these these things, these, these sort of like GPTs that will allow people to then you can get out into the world and other people can use them. It can bring it back to your business. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with it. Um, what are your thoughts as far as like future, the future of AI? Let's talk about AI, like the future of AI. Do you use it in your business? And what do you see as, as it for, you know, for the future of how we, how we work together as a team, because I know, you know, we want it still to be authentically our, us. We want it to, our business still to be authentic. We don't want it to sound like it's artificial. We want it to sound authentically human, if you will. Um, but so how do you, like, what do you, what do you think is coming up? Like, what are you excited about? And, um, you know, as a businessman with your team, how it would might especially positively impact your team? I think the way I look at it, like chat, chat GPT and AI, when it can be a time saver. I mean, let's be honest. If you if you're stumped for a post today and you don't know quite what to do, you can go in there and tap in and say, okay, write me a post. You know, targeting these people, I want to accomplish these pain points, whatever. And it it can really like save you some time. But I think I like to use it as an outline. I have ideas of what I want my message to be. You can use it as an outline to be like, okay, that's giving me some good ideas as it's giving me nudges of how I should write my message or whatever. But I personally like the human aspect myself. I like to be able to go in and have those genuine conversations. And every single post that I write is from my heart. It's not something that I went in chat GPT and been like, okay, create me a post because that's not how I want to do my business. That's not how I want to build my business. And you can, let's be honest, you can go on Facebook and you can read posts and you can know that person copied and pasted directly off chat GPT and put it in there. And I think, you know, for future, it, it is a time saver. It can be a good thing, but I think we also need to dial it back a little bit and remember we are human beings and it's about building the rapport. It's about building the connections and being authentic because let's be honest, I don't want to be a robot in somebody else's industry. I don't want to just be another cog in the wheel. I want to be a standout and I want people to come to me and go, oh, she really cares. She's genuine. She really wants me to grow and expand because, you know, a dime a dozen. You can go in there and you can read people's posts and you can go, okay, he trained with so-and-so. She's been on a mastermind with him and because you, you can read the taglines and you can feel it and you, you can feel 
I don't know, for me anyways, I can feel in someone's post, whether it's genuine, heartfelt, or if it's just like, okay, whatever, you know, it's just another run of the mill thing. So I'm excited about it for the fact that it can like save some time and it can help people who are at a loss to like, I mean, you can go in there and you can create whole, you know, masterminds and you can create workshops and you can do all the things in there. But I think people need to dial it back and remember that to use it just as an outline, that's an outline of what you want to accomplish, but you really need to put your heart and your soul into what you're trying to teach people, what you're trying to accomplish. And people want to have that genuine connection and rapport with you. They want to know that you genuinely care about them as a person, that they're not just another number on your notch on your bed. You know what I mean? So I think for me, it can be a good tool, but I think too many people might just go, okay, this is it. This is the answer to all the things. I don't have to do anything. I can just go in, type it, and post it. Th that's going to just, you know, stop what you're out here to do, to be honest, because people want that genuine connection. Yeah, absolutely. I think I use AI and I use a lot of it with just like my voice saying, this is what I my thoughts are. And I, mean, I also use it alongside my Grammarly tool because I feel like with, with Grammarly, my plagiarism checker is that it, it helps to see like, okay, what has been said already? Because I really want it to come from me, like my experience, you know, whether it's what I've learned, because I get, again, learn, you don't have to know everything all the time, but learning is growing. And if you're learning in the industry, things that are happening and can, and can really help an industry or can harm an industry and what you can share about it, you still want it to come authentically from you and not, you know, words said by other people. So I use that. And which leads me to like, what is... I mean, I'm sure you have personal favorites. So what do you have a favorite uh, uh, or a couple of favorite tools that you use for your team and, and why do you prefer them? Well, right now, I think one of my favorites is, and, and I'll be honest, I was, a, I was against WhatsApp. I was like, I don't need another app on my phone, WhatsApp and Telegram. But to be able to go in there and have a channel in either of those things and have a conversation space for your team to drop trainings, to have conversations, to have questions, to, you know, you can pin the thing at the top saying, here's a meeting, here's the link, etc. cetera. Um, it's a really good space to have people to be able to go in and have all that information where, you know, in Messenger, let's be honest, things get lost in Messenger on Facebook all the time, I'll have people go, I'm bumping this up because I don't think you saw this. And God forbid, what if Facebook goes belly up and, you know, you lose your account, then it's gone. So for me, WhatsApp and Telegram are really good channels for my team right now. I know a lot of other people within my community use Slack. Um, mm -hmm. I like Boxer and I like Boxer just for the fact that you can voice note um, a quick thing, that type of thing. Um, I will say those tools, um, I have to I have to silence the notifications because otherwise I'm just like, okay, another, no. It's like going into a room and all these flashy lights. Um, so for me, the, the chats that are available that are not on like the social media, like of Instagram and Facebook and those types of things, because those things, there's no guarantee that those things are going to be around forever. So I like the ability to have something outside of that that's connected to my phone, that's connected to my phone number. Yeah, no, I love that. I use WhatsApp too. And when I was working one-on-one -on -one with solopreneurs, I would um, I would use WhatsApp as the ability to, to reach me during the week, Monday through Friday, if something came up, because, you know, as we know, things can come up and it's and to hold on to how you are feeling in the moment till your next call just doesn't work because we know as with time, things kind of like settle down again and you might not get your question answered and, and then you've lost that. And I think that helped that they didn't they wouldn't, you know, there would be no momentum. So like for me, I love WhatsApp. But as I was saying, I am a Trello girl. I love being able to like put everything there, uh, what I need in my Trello, um, my different Trello uh, boards. Um, and then I also, and I can find them easily because everything is where I need it to be. Now, some of it needs to be cleaned up a little bit and that's just because I, 
I've now started becoming more strategic around things. So I need to go in and clean it up. But for the most part, I love it. And then Canva, I love being able to use Canva in a way that helps me to, you know, be artistic, because I do come from an art background. I went to art school for a year. because, And the only reason I only went for a year is because I missed my friends. And because I missed my friends, I transferred back to uh, regular high school to be with my friends. I was lonely. I was, you know, 16 when I went. And so 17 years old, I went back to to be with my friends. And, and that's okay. I found another outlet, which was theater arts. And so I was still had my artistic thing going. So anyways, I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, for coming on today. It's been a great conversation. I've loved learning about what tools you have found work best for you and your team. And I want to remind our audience that self-care is, is not just a personal luxury, right? It's a business necessity. And th when I say self-care, I'm talking about um, the things that you bring into your business are going to really help, like especially with your team. If you are setting your, your team up for success with the tools that you use, with team building, like I talked about last week uh, in last week's video, you're going to have a more enriched environment with your team, uh, especially and as, as CJ pointed out today, you know, being that leader who supports and uplifts your team members to become leaders themselves so that when you expand your business and you bring in new hires, um, then you are able to um, have, you know, them to be mentors and to help lift them up as they go through and learn how things work and run, right, more effectively. Um, last week, I left you with three questions. As you reflect on your team's effectiveness and working together, productivity and supporting each other, and they were, do they work well with each other? Is there conflict? And what can you as the leader do of your, of your company do to bring them together? For today, what tools can you implement that will provide more ease and flow for your team and business as a whole, as CJ has, has shared with us today? She loves the, um, the, the apps that you can use on your phone to stay in connect, contact with your team, Voxer, WhatsApp, and Telegram. And when you look at your business from uh, a holistic point of view, meaning how can I bring in quality of life and how wellness can significantly improve your business and your team, you will benefit because you'll find that you'll have higher uh, productivity, better morale, team collaboration, team re retention. They'll want to stay because you're fo fostering loyalty, because your team feels valued. And you as the CEO of your company will feel valued because you'll feel confident that you're on the same page with your team for the vision and mission of your business and the impact you want to make on the world. I want to thank again my guest CJ Boyd for hopping on this live with me today. CJ, thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. So honored. Oh, thank you. And everyone, I hope you have a great, uh, great rest of your day and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.